guys. Today we're going to look at faces, and faces is an often requested uh, subject for us to go in a little bit more of a deep dive in. And a lot of uh, students will ask me, well, is fat, is, are faces really, really that necessary? Well, yes and no. So when we're really trying to get people to engage with our looks and, you know, be moved by them, faces are a really great addition to our fashion sketches. So if we take something like this, let's just say that, you know, what is that? And everyone will say, oh, it's a smiley face. Now, why do we always say that? Because it's not a face at all. It's just a dot and a line. Well, we as humans are really sort of biologically programmed and wired to respond to faces. So adding a face to your fashion sketches can really create that connection between the viewer and your work. And especially at this stage when you're building your portfolio and you know trying to get um, a job or to win clients or um, to get uh, admission to a school, we want that connection. We want that innate connection with our drawing. So again, faces are really important to be able to build that connection. Now, um, luckily for us, we can sort of simplify it for our croaky versions. But um, the basics of knowing the proportion of the face and sort of how they are put together and when we can exaggerate them uh, are really what we need to focus on. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a face and we're going to take a look at the sort of shapes and proportions needed to create a good fashion face. Um, I'm going to start with a straight on view and I'm going to start with a general just sort of oval shape, almost like an egg, a little bit wider at top and a little bit smaller at the bottom. And we'll just sort of, you know, give ourselves a general head shape. Again, sort of like an upside down egg. Okay. Now from here, let's take a look at some of our proportions and I'm going to focus in on a couple of our main features, which are going to be the eyes and the mouth, which is really kind of what we want to focus on in our fa uh, fashion uh, face. So what are the proportions of the face? Well, the first thing I'm going to do to sort of work out the proportions is I'm going to divide this whole area from top of the head to chin into half. And I'm going to put a line in the middle which is going to serve as our eye line. Now, just to help us out too, I'm going to draw a line down the middle. And that is going to help us with sort of the symmetry of the face, because of course we have um, this symmetry, you know, the right half and left half are pretty much the same. Um, and we want to try to keep it as symmetrical as possible. So now that we have this, what I want to do is I want to start with the eyes. Now you can start wherever you want. I kind of like to start with the eyes. They're the real personality of the face. Now what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to do an enlarged version of the eye and we're going to take a look at the sort of proportions and shape of the eye. Now we don't need to do as much of this detail in our croquis because they're so small, but to get the idea of how it works, it's easier to blow it up and sort of see where everything is working. So to understand the eye, let's start with base, the base structure of the eye, which is the eyeball. Now the eyeball is a sphere. So I'm going to start with a, just a circle, you know, sort of like this. Maybe a little bit more round. We're going to try to get it as round as possible. And that's our eyeball. Everything else is sort of built around this shape. Now what I want to do, and of course this isn't really going to be something that you do when you draw every eye on your croaky, but again, it's really just to understand the shape of the eye and the proportions of the eye. So it's easier when you shrink it down to a small scale. So to put in the eyelid, I want to understand what is the inside and what is the outside. And what I mean by that is there's going to be a side with the nose, which is the inside, let's call the nose right here, and the outside, which is the side of the head with maybe the ear over here, okay? So this here is the inside and this is the outside over here, okay? Now, to draw the eyelid, I'm going to do a similar thing that I did over here. I'm going to draw a line in the middle 
and I'm going to draw a line in the middle vertically. So middle, horizontal, vertically. Uh, so we've sort of divided this up a couple ways. Now what I want to do is I'm going to get the shape of the eye. And when I get the, draw the, out, uh, the upper eyelid, okay, I'm not going to go all the way up here to the outside of the eyeball because, of course, we can't see the entire eyeball. The eyelid covers actually most of it. But it goes up and it goes down. And of course, everybody has a different shaped eye. Um, the, you know, the shapes and stuff will vary quite a bit from person to person. But in all people, the upper eyelid will start here at that middle line. It will also end on the outside here at that middle line. And it's going to peak in fullness, so go up and then down, and that peak is going to happen just to the side of that middle line, uh, toward the outer uh, side of it. So if I have the middle line here, it's going to open up just to the side of it in fullness. So now I'm going to go in and sort of use my points to create my um, upper eyelid shape. Now, to do the bottom, they're going to start and end at the same points, and the peak fullness for my bottom lid happens right in that middle part, okay? So I'm going to kind of go out and around, and then go like this. And then I get a very nice eye shape. From there, I can go in and do the rest of my details for the eyes. And I'm going to take a, a look at the end to see how this translates on a much smaller version with our croaky, but we of course have the pupil which is a black round space. Now what I'm going to do when I do the round part for the pupil, I'm going to leave a little white. Now this is important to show a little bit of shine in the eyes, which really gives it a very nice effect. Now around that pupil we get the iris, and the iris is typically cut off on the bottom and top. And of course, just like before, I'm going to block out some parts to keep white. And again, that'll give us a little shine to the eye and look quite nice. And again, this is a little large and a little bit more detailed that we're gonna, than we're going to see in our normal croquis. But I'll go and at the end show you how to translate that a little bit better. Okay? So there's our eye shape. If we want to go from there, we can add a little bit of an eyelid just to sort of give you something. Again, it's not really that necessary in uh, the size that we're working in. And then, of course, we can also, if we'd like, add a few eyelashes. And I'm going to brush them off to the side like so. Eyelashes like to go off to the side and not sort of kind of straight up. We want to avo avoid what I like to call spider eyes. So that would be eyes that kind of go like this with the lashes. We don't want that. We want to keep them, you know, coming off to the side there, kind of flushed. And you can do top and bottom if you want. Again, a little lash is nice to add even at the croaky level. But we don't need to go into so much detail as we do when we were enlarging them, okay? So there's the shape of our eye. So it's time to go ahead and put them in our face. Now, these are the general proportions of the eye, but the eye placement has proportions too. Now, our natural eye placement will come in the eye line. So you know how when we draw our croaky, our croaky is 10 heads tall, and we take the length of the head and then times nine to do the whole figure? Well, a similar system is put in place for our eyes. Our head is five eyes wide. Well, what does that mean? That means we take this, this line and divide it sort of five ways. So one, two, three, four, five to get our eye placement. The two in the middle here are our actual eyes. There's about an eye width between them and an eye width from the edge of the eye to the edge of the face. Now in fashion, what we typically do is we enlarge the eyes. And we see this in all sorts of uh, illustration. We see it in Disney animation, we see it in anime, 
Um, and fashion sketching is no different. We tend to exaggerate the size of the eyes because those larger eyes give us more of a connection. And also larger eyes are considered more attractive. Um, so we will exaggerate the proportions from natural to make them a little bit bigger. Um, now, of course, you can keep it natural if you want, but I'm gonna enlarge mine a little bit. And the way I'm gonna do that is I have my, my basic um, five divisions here, but I'm going to end the eye a little bit closer to that edge of the face um, to make my eyes bigger. I don't want to encroach too much on this middle part. We want to keep that distance fairly uh, far apart in the middle, but we can start to enlarge them by skimping into these sideways parts, okay? And so again, you know, just to sort of rough it out, I have the eyes. Again, I'm just going to do it kind of light. And again, if you need to do this, this is fine. But if not, you know, once you practice and you get that sort of familiarity with that eye shape, you probably won't need to do it. But I just sort of want to show you the proportions of what we're doing. And again, so we have the middle line and the upper line. So let's go ahead and draw in our eyes. Again, our upper eyelids are going to be at a point just past that middle line. Coming back down to the horizontal middle of the eye. And of course, that bottom lid is going to be at, um, full in that middle line. And planning this out too, sort of planning just sort of where your dots are can uh, help you make your eyes look symmetrical, um, which can be a very difficult thing. Uh, a lot of times you get one eye and it looks great and then you do the other eye and it looks great but it's not symmetrical to what you did before which can make it look the whole face kind of look a little bit wonky and especially if you have tough time with that you might just want to go ahead and put a uh, uh, swoop of hair or something to cover the other one if that's a real tricky part for you so we have the eye shape Okay, I'm gonna go in and do a little bit of a pupil for each one. Again, leaving a little bit of white, leaving kind of some white chunks to serve as that little sparkle in the eye. can go in and put pupil in. Or not pupil, but iris, sorry. And again, you can sort of put a little bit of whatever you want in there if you want to put something, but just always leave that light in there. You can go ahead and give her some, some eye color too, if you so desire. Again, eye color is usually not something I add croaky level. Um, just because it's a little small for it, but since we're doing this kind of blown up, this is a lot bigger, you can put in a little color. Interesting blue eyes. And again, don't forget to leave that white. That little bit of white gives that little shine in the eye which is so important. Seems like such a little thing, but it really can give so much life. Now from here, we can add a little bit more detail. Again, if we want to do some eyelashes, we can. Keeping them sort of swept to the side. Why not? And 
And again, if you do want to add just a little bit here for sort of a crease, you can. A lot of times you can put it on the bottom too, but a lot of times I see that looks a little, maybe a little bit um, making her look a little bit tired. Now what we want to do is we want to do our eyebrows. And what I like to do with the eyebrows, and as you guys probably know, you can go ahead and do all sorts of different shapes of eyebrows. Uh, especially since, you know, we can draw them in, we can make them any shape that we want. And certainly, um, uh, uh, makeup artists certainly do. So how I like to make my eyebrows is to sort of just do a line to give me a guide. And again, to help me make them symmetrical. So maybe I'll just do something like that. And then you can go ahead and um, you can do a solid shape if you like. But if you like something a little bit more natural, kind of like to just sort of uh, do little short, brisk strokes to go ahead and serve for our eyebrows. And this is good for a more sort of natural look too, if that's what you're going for. And again, that really depends on your collection. Um, you know, is it, you know, something very dramatic? Is she going to be doing full makeup? Is it formal? So are, is, you know, is are her eyebrows going to be really, really well done? Um, is it a little bit more casual, more natural, kind of less made up? Um, in, in that case, you might want a more natural look. Just depends on what you want. So there we have our eyes. I'm just going to erase away some of that. Pencil, so it's a little bit cleaner now. And of course, if you want, um, you can always go ahead and darken that upper eyelid a little bit. Um, it can really help to sort of bring attention, kind of like she's wearing eyeliner or something. Something maybe like that. And maybe a little bit there. Again, just trying to make it even. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to work our way down to the nose. And um, the nose is a difficult thing to draw, not going to lie. Um, but luckily, especially at this position straight on, it really doesn't have much of a profile. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm really just going to indicate the nose a little bit by drawing maybe a little bit of a shadow right here. So the important thing to know is where the nose ends. So I have this line right here that's the our eye line, which is in the middle of the head. But if I go from here to here and then draw a notch sort of in the middle between the eye line and the chin, it's about where our nose ends, okay? And I'm not gonna do much more than maybe just add a little shadow like this, okay? Now, if you're not very good and you're not very confident in your noses, that's all you would really need to do. You don't need to do much more. If you really do feel compelled, you can do a little bit of the shape of the nose. So maybe a little bit of like a curl like that, a little soft curve up. If you're feeling really ambitious, you can curve again and again to get a little bit of the nostrils on either side. And again, if you want to do just a little bit more than that, not necessary, but you can begin to draw up the nose, maybe with something a little bit like this, and maybe a little bit of sort of what the nostrils are going to do from side to side. And if it's particularly angular, you can put maybe a little bit of a line like that as well. What you do want to avoid, however, is outlining the entire nose. So I've seen, you know, a lot of students sort of draw their noses and it'll look something like this, which is the fully outlined nose. You definitely do not want to do that. It's very hard to make it pull off, uh, to pull it off well, to make it look sort of natural and, and, and nice. And um, it a lot of times sort of just ends up looking a little awkward and, um, you know, kind of like a kid's drawing. So we want to avoid it. 
Now the next thing we're going to come down to is um, the mouth. And the mouth, just like the eyes, uh, have lots of different shapes depending on person to person. Um, but let's talk about a little bit about the proportions and what is um, similar amongst them all. So from here's the bottom of the nose to the chin, I want to divide this up in half again. And that is where the sort of middle of my mouth is going to be, okay? So something like that. Now, the edges of my mouth, if I kind of bring a line down from the center of my eyes, that's kind of where the edge of my mouth is going to be, the corners of my mouth. It's gonna be about that big. Of course, some people have smaller mouths, some people have bigger mouths. It's going to be sort of up to you. But in general, if we kind of bring these lines down from the middle of the eyes, it makes it look like she's crying a little bit, but um, that is where the edges of our mouth are going to be. Now, our upper lip will peak up here and then kind of go down. And again, there's lots of different shapes that you can use. Some kind of go flat across here. Some have a little bit of an indent. So whichever way you want to do it, that's the way you're going to do it. And it's going to kind of come down to that corner there. Okay. Our bottom lip too will be nice and full and there's lots of shapes to it. We're going to kind of go in like that. Now let me ink that. I probably should have inked it to begin with. And of course we'll do, you never want to do go completely straight across. You kind of want to do a little bit of a wiggle. Top lip usually has a little bit of a bulge here. So just like a little bit of a wiggle in the line to separate them. Okay. So um, from here, what we can do is we can shape out the face. Um, now this gives us a good sort of um, outline, you know, basis, but it's not quite nice enough. It's, so what we're going to do is um, outline the face a little bit more and pay a little bit more uh, attention to sort of the details of what the face is going to do. So I like to sort of start here. Now in the eyes, that's where our temples are. So what they do is they go ahead and they kind of curve in a little bit. So curve in a little bit um, at the uh, uh, temples of the eyes. Then right below we get our cheekbones. And so we're going to curve them out and curve it out. Okay. Ooh, this one I brought down a little bit further. So why don't I go ahead and do that? Um, from here, let's bump on down to the chin and we can have something pointy or round or whatever we like. Um, but I like to do maybe just a little bit of a cross and a little bit of sort of a roundness right here with the chin kind of coming from the corners of the bottom lip or middle of the bottom lip kind of kind of out like so and then from here from that roundness we can bring it and sort of connect it and here we can connect it Ooh, sorry, I've got a little weird on that side um, and then the rest I'm gonna leave for when we do the hair but since we're focusing on the face in this lesson let's do the hairline let's assume it's sort of pulled back because our forehead's not going to go all the way up here. We're going to have a hairline and the hairline usually, you know, again, different shapes. Some people have those sort of pointed widow's peaks or sometimes, but a lot of times it'll just kind of go straight across and then kind of come in here and then maybe kind of come down a little bit over here like so. Okay. And then the rest will be um, uh, put into our hairline. Um, I'm going to do one thing first, and that's our ears. Now, the ears are fairly large. They come from the corner. They start here at the corner and kind of come down a little bit farther than most people think, all the way almost to the mouth. Now, this isn't too important, except if she is having her hair up and you want to have the opportunity to maybe do some nice little earrings or whatever else gives you that opportunity. Now let's finish up with the hair from the back of the ears. Again, this is, we're going to do like a bun. 
It's going to follow that outline that we did like so. Okay. And let's go ahead and put the neck in now with uh, females. Um, and I, I'll, I'll go a little bit about sort of the differences between male and female faces uh, as well. Um, we like to keep it kind of narrow. So what I'm going to do is kind of where the corner of the mouth is just a little ways out, I'm going to go ahead and put the neck and have it kind of come out. So it's sort of tapered up. Of course, then you can maybe do a little, you know, um, whatever you want. Um, okay, so I'm going to clean this up and then let's talk about shadow for a quick second. So we'll clean her up. Make sure your ink is dry before you do this. <laughs> I wish I had done this a little bit over again. It's a little bit awkward for me to draw from the side, but you know. Let me see, maybe she needs a little bit more of an eyelid. So I'm going to grab my cool gray number one and let's just talk about shadowing the face real quick. Um, what I want to do is same thing as uh, I always do when I am putting down my coloring or my shading. Let's pick my light direction. So if this is my light direction, it's going to hit her face like this. That means this side is going to go ahead and be in shadow. So let's go ahead and do it. So this whole side is going to get a nice shadow. that really jut out and sort of or sink back um so here in the eyes the eyes really sink back so this upper part i'm going to kind of go and put in here and i'm going to connect it with these shadows as well over here so shadows really like to be connected so whenever you have kind of shadows that are close to one another it's nice for us to go ahead and connect them they kind of pull together now here's the light side so it's not really going to be that much i don't really have anything to connect it to so i'm just going to kind of bring it right there like that okay now the nose juts out so what we might see is we might see this continue on and down for this side of the nose Okay. And uh, then what we're going to see is we might have a little bit of shadow cast by the nose because the nose juts out over it. So we might have a little bit of shadow here, but be careful because you don't want it to look like a little mustache or anything, <laughs> especially not a little Hitler mustache. That would be terrible. Um, and then our upper lip is going to be in shadow. Now this is because of how our lips form. So I'm gonna give you a little preview for a side view face just to explain why that upper lip is in shadow. So when we have, um, so here's maybe the nose, this would be profile, um, the lips kind of come down and go like this. And then maybe here's our chin, sorry. Something like that. Um, this upper lip is sort of angling downward, sort of the same thing as the nose. So it's kind of going over, so it always is in shadow. So that's why we get that shadow on our upper lip. And as you can see here, our bottom lip is usually fairly full. So again, it will usually have a little bit of a shadow right at the underneath part of our um, bottom lip. Not too much or else, you know, you get the soul patch sort of feeling, which you don't want. And then of course our chin juts out, so we're always gonna get that sort of shadow along our neckline. Maybe here we have a little something like this come down with the, with the muscle, and that's gonna help us sort of jut the um, uh, chin out over the neck. 
And what I want to do lastly is just sort of, this is the ear is a little bit further back. So if it's a little further back, I want to just sort of push it back by maybe adding a little shadow right there to it. Okay, so there's our shaded face. Very simple, very easy. Now what I'm gonna do is right up here, I'm gonna shrink it all down um, and see what it looks like on a little tiny like croaky scale. Um, what changes, you know, what, what details sort of get left out, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna do, you know, start again. And a lot of times your croakies are gonna have a very nice sort of shape of the head for you to work with anyways. So here's sort of a croaky sized head, like so. And again, we'll just divide it up like I did before. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put in the eyes. And again, I'm gonna exaggerate their size and focus mostly on their shape. And see, I haven't done all of that predetermined kind of oh, work, but I'm just gonna to work to try to make them as symmetrical as possible. And I have left quite a bit of distance in the middle. That's sort of my style of, I sort of do the outslip eyes. Of course, you can definitely bring them in a little bit more. I left a, quite a bit of distance right in here. Um, now what I'm gonna do is, instead of doing all of this little detail here, what I like to do is kind of just dot for the eyes. Maybe do a little bit of a round thing, but just kind of dot it. And the dotting leaves it that white that I was talking about and kind of gives this like dewy effect. So I don't do the color. And this is, you know, you're gonna develop your own style as well. This is sort of just like how I like to do it. I don't do a lot of the eyelashes. If you wanna do a little bit of eyelash, I would say just, you know, just a couple little sort of flicks of the pen uh, on one side. Uh, I don't bother to do the bottom ones, but again, it's gonna be up to you and how you like to do your faces. Uh, my nose, I don't do much more than a little line, just like so. And then we'll move on to the lips. And the bottom. And a little something here, just to split it up. Of course, she looks very weird without her eyebrows, so let's go ahead and put our eyebrows in. People look very weird without eyebrows. They frame the whole face. They're much more important than we think. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and just finish up with the outline. Again, in, coming in around the eyes and then below out for those cheekbones and then giving her a little bit of a chin, connecting those lines, connecting the lines and let's do another pull back so we can just focus on the face and its shape, kind of bringing down the hairline like so and around and around and why not? some ears, her ears, a little bit high up. She has kind of like a high ear on this one. But for the most part, we don't really can be too accurate with our ears. Boop. We like the earrings. And let's give her a neck. And again, if we want to, a little neck muscles and a little bit of clavicle are always kind of nice to have, like so. So let me clean it up just to show you what it looks like. And that's really all we need to do um, with our faces. You can see the details that I left in and left out on the smaller version from the bigger version. And what I wanna do, so let me bring my camera in real close so you can see sort of the differences from one to the other. So this is the small croaky. So I want you to see what I did here. 
Okay, see the little eyes are just sort of little dots in there. It's really not enough space or room to put anything more than that in it. And again, it's not, you know, it's not the Mona Lisa, that's for sure. It's really just very simple. But we don't need it to be terribly complicated um, when we do our sketching. Now, just for a minute, I want to, uh, just before we head on to the sort of second part of this video when we look at um, side view, I want to just look really closely and really quickly at how the proportions differ in men, because eventually you may be designing for men, who knows? So let's make sure you can, yep, you can see that. So I'm going to do a smaller sort of croaky version over here, but I'm gonna try to change the proportions for a guy. Um, so what am I gonna do? Let's, well, let me, let me do a new page, actually. I can work, work clean. Now, um, for the most part, the basic proportions that I talked about uh, for a guy are the same. So the eyes are in the same middle of the head, the head is like five eyes wide, so on and so forth. So let's just, you know, very quickly kind of do a guy's head and just note what's different. Now, I'm actually not as good as drawing guys because um, I've mainly been in women's wear and mainly focus my sketching in women's wear. But let me take a stab at it. So we're gonna start with that same proportion, that sort of upside down egg. Again, same sort of middle line, same across line. Now I'm going to um, do less to exaggerate the size of the eyes. Uh, men tend to have slightly smaller eyes than females. Um, so we're going to not exact, I'm going to keep it to a more natural proportion of the eyes. And keep a sort of a lighter line. I'm not going to really kind of really go crazy with eyelashes or anything like that. And again, this I'm doing a little bit bigger, so I am going to kind of put in my irises. Same thing with the light, though. We still want light in the eyes. So I'm going to leave that, you know, a little bit of light right there. Okay. It's a good example of having not symmetrical eyes, but... Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to also put in the um, eyebrows. I want them to be symmetrical, but I'm going to also do them a little kind of straighter. Not so arced. And a little bit thicker. For the most part, guys don't tweeze down their eyebrows quite as much. They do have sometimes some arch to it, but they tend to be a little bit straighter across, a little bit kind of wilder and bushier. Okay, nose is in the same place right here. And again, I'm not gonna do too much to uh, define it. Again, if you do want a little bit more, you can kind of shape in what the nose and the nostril might be doing, but you don't need to do too much. Um, the lips, I'm going to do a little bit smaller than uh, the female lips, but of course they're still in the same position right over here in the middle, and they're gonna end kind of if we bring this down, we bring this down right there.
little bit smaller. So I didn't make them quite as big. I'm not exaggerating the size of his eyes or his mouth as much as I would with a female. Like that. And now we're really gonna get the feel of him is uh, with the shape of the skull. And what I'm gonna focus on to really bring it out in, um, uh, as a guy is I'm gonna square the jaw and make a much wider neck. So um, same sort of curving in here and curving out with the cheekbones, okay? But now when I do the chin, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a kind of a little bit wider here and then I'm not gonna just connect this because a lot of times women have very soft jaws and it'll sort of just connect through here. But with a guy, right here at the sort of corner of the mouth, I'm gonna make it very sharp. And kind of round this up and then bring it up. So we get that very square jaw feeling. Got a little round on this side. Okay, and what we'll do is now, instead of having a thin neck where it kind of came comes here, I'm gonna broaden the neck and bring it almost all the way out here. So we're gonna do a very kind of broad neck. And the hairline will be fairly similar, especially let's imagine it's either, you know, brushed back or maybe shaved or whatever else. But here it's gonna come down a lot further right here. And the ears are pretty much the same. And we still have this. And of course the shoulders are much broader. So where you might slope them down, you're gonna keep them very square and put in some big shoulders. And then of course, the rest of the head. So let me clean it up just to show you what we are left with. And we can shade it the same way uh, as we did before, but with the bigger eyebrows, the square jaw, and the thicker neck, um, uh, hopefully it's reading a little bit more like a guy. Um, so I'm going to come back in our next part and we're going to talk about uh, side view faces. So I'll see you then.